Hey, this is Blue October, and we're hanging with Rob with Front Row Live. Let's talk about this this new album. And, um, you know, this time around, you guys decided to go into the studio on your own, do it on your own. There's no Justin Palmer this time around. Um, there's no other producer. Like, what was that like? Um, yeah, it was a different process this time. Justin, Justin totally stepped. I mean, he's always co-produced, but he totally stepped into the the role of like being the captain and the only captain on this one. And right. but you, like when it's your ninth album by then, you kind of have to sort of like take the training wheels off and, and try doing it on your own and see how it goes. And I I'm, I'm not just saying this. I always say like people always say, oh, this is our best record yet because you have to say that. Right. But I really, truly feel like this is the best record we've ever done. I've listened to it nonstop since it's since it's uh, completion. And I got to give it up to Justin. You know, it's like and we all we all really just really trusted him 10 years ago we probably would have like just been a thorn <laughs> in his side mind, about yeah. it yeah we would have been yeah, like no nope. probably been fighting in the studio <laughs> yeah, that sucks that sucks that sucks no, man, whatever you say sucks we're not gonna do it that's <laughs> yeah. what <laughs> so with this record um it's it's kind of a new direction it's kind of a new sound in a way um i hope you're happy was the is the title track um and that was the first listen of the record as well um what kind of inspired this this new kind of direction in the sound of you guys it's you know it's a new sound but it's not it's a uh, it's it's i guess it's a new sound for us in a way but if you look at the if you look at our influences and what we like what collectively what we all you know kind of grew up listening to and, and the influences of this band there's a common thread there's bands like the cure and depeche mode and right. the smiths and and cocteau twins and you know so this i feel like this album is like the first time that we've all really tapped into that sort of 80s like late 80s you know 88 89 kind of era yeah. as a band and so yeah it kind of comes across as a new sound but it's really just us sort of like having no inhibitions about about showing who our influences are for sure do you think it would have been different if you guys did this album as your first record like when you guys first started out and started showing you know these influences oh yeah i mean it would have been i think if you look back to our first album the answers you could probably see some of those influence on that record you know yeah. and then because that record was produced basically by us we were little children you know we, you always just want to be the band that you look up to right you know um so now i feel like what matt said taking those influences and then you know not pigeonholing ourselves into being the same band we've always been because you know, if we were the same band we were in hate when Hate Me came out or yeah. Into the Ocean came out, we'd be sitting on the sidelines because that's just, I don't know, for some reason, genres go in and out and styles of music change and what people like change. So Justin's real good about keeping his ear to the ground in that part. He's a real big hip hop guy, loves beats and everything like that. So it was yeah. cool to be able to mix the bands that, that Matt was talking about with Justin's, you know, beat influence as far as hip hop, but still be able to take it down a little bit of the comfortable road that we know. But you don't want to stay too comfortable or it just gets really old. Right. Right. And, and by saying that, you know, how did you guys make yourselves uncomfortable in the studio? How did you guys kind of challenge yourselves now that, you know, your producer was basically your band member. So, you know, although there is a, a, a type of respect for him, I feel like there's also that type of like, dude, we're still brothers. Like, right. it's hard to take you seriously. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that you're exactly right. And that that's how that's how we kind of did pull ourselves out of that out of that box was by you know he really wanted to do it he's yeah. co-produced everything since foiled no yeah. since history for sale yeah so i mean he's he has the knowledge and he has the but it was just a different way of doing things and if we if like i just said a second ago if you don't pull yourself out of that box then it's just going to get stale and stagnant and right. you know him doing that was it was tough for me especially being his brother like take direction from your brother you know you just want to be like no man you're my brother i don't want to yeah. listen to a thing you say yeah but you know when you think about it on the professional side and as a musician you know if you just open your mind up just a little bit to allowing these things to happen or at least try to make them happen maybe they won't work yeah but you gotta at least give them that opportunity right and what he's saying he he justin hears songs when he hears them and when he writes them he hears like a symphony in his head every single part is there and we're going so what are you hearing right now you know <laughs> like what's next you know because right. we know you have the song in it's your head right now yeah. yeah it's pretty much mapped out in his head and he just has to figure out a way to explain that to us since we're so close where we're not where we don't get defensive right. and we are willing to try his his idea but at the same time most of the time he was willing to try our, our ideas as right. well unless he was just like no this is what I'm hearing, and I've been hearing this since I started this song, so we need to give that the love it deserves. 
And then if it doesn't work, we'll, we'll go a different way. It's hard to put your foot down like that when, when you guys are so close to the way that you guys are. There is, there is a ton of uh, respect, though, on this record all around, like from, from everybody. I mean, there were, you know, there were moments... Jer- I was kind of doing this because Jeremy and I, I feel like, probably had to get put through the ringer the most as far oh, yeah. as like doing things that we're not used to. Right. But there were definitely times on our side, too, where we were like, you got to give us a couple hours to just jam and get these ideas out. And you'll hear that it's you'll hear things that you weren't hearing. And, and and so there was a lot of like, OK, I get it. Let's do that. And, you know, but but one thing that I and it was in all of it wound up being positive. Everything wound up being the right move, which was great. But the thing that I kept hearing a lot throughout the recording process was just trust me, trust me. And we did, you know, like we all trusted it. Nobody was like, oh, this, you know, this is nonsense. That's not going to work. Right. And, and at the end of the day, it's like I always say that I don't care what the ingredients are as long as the dish tastes really good and the dish tastes really good. So it is what it is, you know. Right. And, and for you, with, with King being the track that you uh, you were in the studio with, like, how did you challenge yourself this time? Because um, I'm sure you've been in the studio before. Oh, man, you just have to listen. And that's what it was. Justin just literally sang the part to me. Yeah. And I knocked it out like that. It was kind of getting to know the guys when I came in, and that's what that was about. And it was a really great experience. They're, they're a really great group of guys, and I'm just lucky to be here. I think you want to say goobers. They're, they're, a bunch of, they're a bunch of goobers, but man. It's true. It's true, man. Now, it's just an amazing experience. The album's really great. I can't wait for people to hear this, and it's been really fun unraveling it live uh, on stage. In fact, tonight, we're about to play a track we've never played in front of anybody. Nice. Um, so it, it sounds awesome too, man, it's huge. Nice. I think it's uh, one that Matt and, you, you wrote that with Justin, right, Daylight? Killer track's called, yeah, Daylight, so. Okay. We're gonna do that tonight, man, if you be at the show. Now, now you have to do it. <laughs> yeah, I kind of snuck that in there. I, I'm super stoked to play it. And they said I gotta talk, to, talk these guys into it. That's what Justin told me, so <laughs> nice. I guess we're doing it. Well, you kind of segue to my next question because now that this record, I laugh thinking about it. Now that this record is not all about Justin, Right. <laughs> All right. Do you guys have more involvement in the writing process? Um, and if so, you know, what was that like this time around? We, I mean, we've always had a, a hand in the writing as far we always write our individual parts for the mm-hmm. most part. But we, we've, we've had a lot of co-writing as far as the music goes throughout okay. the years. Like we've had a lot of uh, contributions musically. Jeremy's written several songs. I've written several songs. Um, but Ryan's lyrically, got Ryan's got nice. songs on this yeah. record. Yeah. Um, but I think that for I think the big difference on this record is lyrically. Uh, Justin's let us dabble with some some lyric things in the past, but there, there haven't been a lot of like not that I remember like a lot of like straight up like let's sit down and write the song lyrically from front to back right. together. And because he wanted this to be from other people's points of view and other concepts, there was a lot of that going on, which was really cool. It was really interesting. And after being in a band for for me for twenty years to kind of do that for the first time, it was it was pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, over the years, as you guys are writing new music, now that this is a new style, do you feel like this this time around it was a lot harder to write? It was a lot easier to write because of the experience that you guys have had over the years? Man, I think it, I think it just depends on, on the record you're making and, like, what sort of mind that Justin's in because Justin's always been, like, our... He's always been the lead guy, you know? Justin, Justin's the leader of this band, and, you know, if, if he comes with some great ideas, then it's really easy... You know, hey guys, check this out, and you're like, oh yeah, man, that, yeah, I got parts for that all day. Right. And then you know, there's some parts where where it's harder. You know, there are some songs that take you, where you might start with the the lyrics or something at the beginning of the recording process, and you really don't finish it, or you rewrite it or whatever at the y'all did that with daylight, right? Yeah. You started it and then you went back and redid a few things. It's just, you know, it's hit and miss on you know whether it's easy. We love what we do. You know, like I can't imagine doing anything else or having to do a different job. So going in the studio for me, whether it's a challenging day, whether I didn't come up with the part that I wanted to come up or I didn't feel as great, it's always amazing because this is what we do. Right. We get to do this. Right. You know, so. Yeah, it's hard to complain. Yeah, you can't. You can't about if you complain, like something's fucked up because <laughs> this is the best job, you know, and it's hard sometimes. And, and But when you're in the studio, that's your chance to do what we do is create and come up with stuff. And when we're out on the road, you're you're creating, yeah, but you're you're playing the song over and over again. Right. The studio is our opportunity to whether it's hard or not hard, whether it comes out easy or whether you really got to, you know, twist it out. Right. It's it's always a blessing because we get to do that, you know. It's 
that's really all I have to say. That's great. I mean, that's great that 20 years down the line, you're still as excited as you were from day one. Like, oh, yeah. I think it's hard for, there are certain artists today that, you know, they kind of forget where they came from. And, yeah. you know, they don't, well, they start, don't appreciate it. I start it. to feel that way. I think about my homeboys that I know that are better drummers than me that are sitting in a cubicle yeah. doing a nine to five job and they're stuck there. And they're amazing musicians, way better than I could probably ever be. But I'm doing this. Yeah. You know, and I, I feel for them, but we're just, I feel like we're so lucky to be able to create right. like we do, so. What do you guys think, what do you guys think it was that kind of let you guys have that longevity in music? Um, because it's hard for an artist to, to say they've been around for 10 years, let alone 20. Um, so what do you think it was that, that was able to keep you guys in the industry and in front, not just in the industry, but you guys were still, you know, making charts, you know, right now the new single is on top right now. and. You know, what do you think it is? Man, there's no quit in this band at all. I mean, this band is like, has been through so much adversity and don't look at Blue October as the process because we, we totally defy all logic as far as how it's supposed to happen or how it's supposed to work. It just has worked, but a lot of that for us, I think, is that there's a real genuine brotherhood within this band. It's not, we're not just buddies that, you know, it's like a business where it's like, you know, hey, I didn't see you for six months, now let's get back to work. It's like, we all love each other, right. you know? And that, that bleeds into it every single day, right. for sure. Now for you, Ryan, like as the, as the new member of the group, like what has it been like for you coming into this kind of like brotherhood? Well, first, my name's Will. Ryan's the guy who's up why did I? Why did I say Ryan? <laughs> no, I mentioned Ryan. There's only three dudes. It's okay. <laughs> but, uh, no, that being said, yeah, exactly. And I've, I've followed these guys for a long time, and you see the journey. Um, they're, man, there's, they're fans. There's, there's a big cult of a man, and they're, they're really uh, diehard about it. And then yeah. you see it, the, the new singles reaching new audience. And you see younger people, the, the mix and the range of people that like normally would not mix, man. You got all types of walks of life yeah. and all age groups coming to these shows. And, uh, man, it's just a positive environment. I think, you know, the recovery thing helps. Uh, you know, Justin's not uh, shy about sharing that. But, right. you know, six years now, and uh, I feel like the momentum from that where the band was on top, maybe had a little bit of a stall with some personal stuff, but got through that, man, because these guys are so close and love each other. Like Matt said, they love each other, got them through the hump, and now it's, like, better than ever, man. This dude's more creative than ever, nicer guy. Like, it, it's just positive, man. The positivity yeah. is just exuding from this camp on right. the daily. So that's, that's what it takes, man. If uh, the law of attraction you got to think about positive things for those things to manifest right. and this band is just all about that and so i'm totally about that it was just kind of a no-brainer to make this decision and come join up with these guys so man grateful now now for you guys when you guys when he was going through the process and you know the recovery and all that stuff like how are you guys able to cope it all together because you know that's difficult you know you have a brother going through something so difficult like that especially while you guys are in the industry yeah, I've actually brought this up a few times, but there were there were times where we would have a really like a, a, like a weird rehearsal or something and rehearsal be over and I would just call him on the way home and just vent, you know, and like, but not, I mean, not like in a like in like a shit talking way, but yeah. more like a, hey, let's remind each other that there's a light at the end of the tunnel and that right. we got each other's back and that things are messed up right now, but it's okay because we're all in this together, you know. And there, there was, I think there was a lot of that. I think that the rest of us all leaned on each other and became more of a unit because of that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. I don't know if I went off on it. No, 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 no. You, that was, that was perfect. Um, and, and, and today, you know, like I'm sure depression is still kind of an issue. Um, I don't it's think, I don't think that goes away. Exactly. So, you know, what happens when you guys are on tour and the depression hits? Um, like, how do you guys all cope with it? Well, I think now, um, now that Justin's in recovery and he's sober, and I think he has, he has more tools that he can use from, from going through recovery and from going through rehab and things like that. He has tools that he's been taught and that he's learned through, through his step program that you know, yeah, I mean, depression, you're right. Depression, anxiety, all that stuff, it never goes away. Yeah. Like, you deal with it, and you learn to deal with it. And Justin's, Justin's learned to deal with it where it doesn't take over his life anymore like it used to. And I'm sure um, the drug abuse and alcohol abuse and everything made it harder for him not to grab control of that. Yeah. You know, but now he, he does have these tools that he's able to use and steps that he's able to go back and just take a breath. And, you know, right now nothing's, nothing's more important than that. You know, if he's going to be depressed or, or anxious or, or if that bout kicks in, 
we just take a little break, man. And he goes, takes a walk. He, you know, he uses his things that he's learned. And if we need to take, take a break, we just take a break. Yeah. You know, it's not, it's not, it's important, but, it, but it's not so important that you can't just stop and right. just let it chill for a second and, and get back to task. Right. You know, now, now that you guys are on tour right now, um, there's already a line outside. It's funny because the line that, that is outside, it's more adults right now than I see kids. Um, but, you know, what's so different on this tour? Man, Will actually touched on it earlier. I was talking about it. I thought it was Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan touched on this earlier. Whatever you want. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine at our show in Phoenix last night after the show, and yeah. she, she's been coming to shows for a long time, and she was like, it's crazy to me how much this has grown, and I'm seeing all these new faces now. And I, was, and I said, you know, at meet and greet even, it's like, you don't just see the the same kind of recycled fans over and over again you know it's like there there are a lot of people that come all the time and we're grateful for that and we become friends with them yeah. but i'd say like half the meet and greet now are people that these are like this is our first show or this is my first show and it's been a it's been a long time since that's been a consistent thing for us so this tour in particular there's a lot of that which means that we're reaching a new audience and we're doing we're doing something right you know i, de I definitely feel like um I hope you're happy. the The track alone, like, it just opens new doors. Um, it, it's it's. I don't want to say it's what's hot today, but it's like it's what more people are willing to listen to. Because I feel like nowadays people are very specific to what they choose to listen to. But yeah, I feel like that song is just opening more doors and introducing so many people to this band that you know has been around for twenty years. It's a highlight of the set too. It's you know. Yeah. It's rare that you have a, I mean, yeah, if a single is a single and people react to it, but yeah. it's rare to have a single that is that is the present day single that people flip out over more than anything else. I right. mean, it's been for like 10 years, it's been Hate Me is kind of that song. And right. like, this is that song now. It's, re it's man, I love it. It's great. Is After it, playing Hate Me for 10 years, it's yeah. nice to have a new one. <laughs> is it interesting to go from such a heavy song like, he like Hate Me to something so like uh, fun and energetic like... Totally. <laughs> like this new track yeah, it's a lot more fun to play too because it's just all this positivity and yeah. you just can't help but smile when you play that song right so yeah. well now this uh, this album album number nine drops uh august 17th, august 17th. Mm -hmm. you guys are doing it on your own your own record label this time around um what else can we expect for 2018 for the band i think two, two, 2018 is probably going to be the busiest year we've ever had i think that we're going to tour Nonstop, at least by talking to my our manager, it sounds like we're going to be touring nonstop. <laughs> we're never coming home, we're honey. Never we're home. never coming home. Yeah. Um, but but you know, I, th I these guys said it too. It's like we're on this upward trajectory, and just when you think it can't get any better, the next day rolls around and it gets even better. Yeah. So it's like I'm just along for the ride right now, and I'm I'm like this is incredible. I mean, if it if it stayed right where it is right now. I could die happy, man, for sure. But I have a feeling that the way things are growing next year is going to be the biggest year we've ever had. Nice. Well, congratulations with all that, guys. I can't wait to listen to the entire uh, record. So you guys be sure to check it out. Uh, I hope you're happy. Drops August 17th. And this is Blue October. And Rob signing out. Thanks for watching.